Hi Robbie, this short video will introduce you to the answers that I think uh, or hope will be meaningful for you. Your question was, how do you hide the chef recommendation section completely? Now let's take a quick look at that under My Cuisine. This section right here is the chef recommendation section. Now you have two choices. One, we can change the name here and bring in blog posts. This doesn't have to be about food. This can be, you know, hours of uh, operation, um, uh, catering specific uh, specifications. You can do pretty much anything you want to do here. The only criteria is that these have to be posts, and you'll create a category within your blog um, post categories to accommodate this. And then you'll tell Elegant Themes to use that category as your chef's recommendations. And if you choose to do that, we would simply rename chef recommendations to be something like recent articles or our service, um, you know, something other than chef recommendations. So I'm going to start with that. I'm going to show you that really quickly. And then I'm going to show you two other ways to get around this. Okay, first of all, I'm on the home page. You can see this is my cuisine. And I'm using a tool called Firebug to help me identify what each of these three sections are called. So I'm going to click on Inspect, and I'm going to hover until I pick up the element that I want. And that's pretty close. So I can see when I hover over Div Class Home Block, that's the element that we're trying to replace. <coughs> Now, I use a tool called Dreamweaver to edit it. I know you'll probably be using WordPress's built-in theme editor, in which case things are going to be a little bit harder for you. Now, since I don't have a blog that's currently using this theme, uh, the, the blog that I created for the gentleman that you saw in the video, it's he's taken it down. It's no longer valid. I'm going to have to show you a couple of things without actually showing it to you live, and I apologize for that. So the first thing I did was I opened Dreamweaver and I went to the home page and I'm going to show you, although I'm showing you how to edit it right here, I'm going to show you how to get to that same thing in WordPress. You're simply going to go to wherever you've got a theme. Uh, let's go right here. I'm going to go to appearance. I'm going to choose editor. And on the right hand side over here, we're going to find, you'll find the file called home.php. You see how it's in gray? The actual file name is in gray. You'll click on it. Now, obviously, this one doesn't have one, but you'll click on it and you'll get the same thing that you're seeing here. Okay? Um, so I've opened this file in Dreamweaver. This is the home of my cuisine. And as you can see, I've already lined myself up to the area where it says click here to browse the menu. Actually, as long as we're here, let's go ahead and answer that question. Uh, I apologize for jumping around. This right here, click here to browse the menu, is what I'm looking at right here. Your question to me was, how do I hide it, but be able to bring it back later if I want? And I mentioned to you that you could wrap this in a comment, and I think you misunderstood what I meant. So I'm going to show you that. I'm going to press Enter and move up. And as I mentioned in the email, a comment character looks like that. It is the less than sign, the explanation point, and then two dashes. And then we'll go to the end of where we want um, the content to be hidden, and we'll put the closing comment character. And that's just two dashes and a greater than sign. Everything in between this opening symbol and this ending symbol will be ignored by the browser. In other words, this will not render, so you will not get the words, click here to browse the menu, nor will you get the bottom shadow line, which we can see right here. Okay, this is the bottom shadow line. Okay, and I think I can prove it by hovering right here. See, there's bottom shadow. So all I've done is effectively delete this element and this element by hiding it with comments. And this is what it will look like when you make that change. Okay? Now, back to this. Chef's recommendations. Back in that same file, I'm going to scroll up till I find the chef recommendations. Now, you can do a quick search, which is something I recommend. I'm just going to 
uh, control F and look for um, chef recommendations. And there's the phrase. As you can see, this is a lot of PHP. That was one of the reasons I asked you, are you comfortable working in PHP? Um, and if not, try commenting things out uh, so that you can undo them if you break something. Now, the title starts here. And then all of this other code is, is querying the theme, finding out your settings, going and getting that information and bringing it back. Um, so this part, remember we talked about you could rename this. You would just change what's in between these quotes to be something else. Um, see my uh, services, for example. Okay, And then as long as you tell the theme that your chef recommendation category ID is, you know, number 12, for example, and all of number 12's categories are see my art services, then that's going to effectively give you what you want, which is not a recommendation, but rather another set of um, posts. So that's method one. Method two would be to completely remove this. Now, this gets a bit more complicated because this home block, remember we I showed you a moment ago, there's one, two, three home blocks. See, they're all the same. Home block, home block, home block last. So all three of these are being managed by this one block of code. It's just iterating through the data that it's selected. And it's looking to see, am I on the first one? Am I less than the third one? Am I on the third one? And it's doing things based on that. So you would actually want to get rid of everything in between this div and the closing div. And you can replace that with something of your own, you know, um, a new title, um, uh, an image. You can um, put in a piece of advertising, something along those lines. Now, here's a word of warning. When you comment, when you wrap a piece of code in comment, like, for example, if we move this down and put this opening comment character in here, anywhere there's another comment, as we find right here, this comment is going to end the comment above. So you really need to get rid of that comment and any others that appear between where you started and where you're ending, because otherwise it'll break them. So I'm going to keep going, keep going, um, keep going. This is, it's two, it's three, this is the third. Keep going, keep going. I'm looking, still looking for comments. Here's another one. And I would actually go through and do a search for the comment character. I'd do a search for that to make sure I caught all of these. Otherwise, you're gonna, it's gonna break something. Okay, get rid of that one. And just a couple more here. Um, and mom, we said. title and home block okay so right here ends the home block and these two closing PHP characters um, are a part of this open query at the bot at the top so right beneath this I would close this comment so right here okay that completely eliminates that left oh actually that completely eliminates all three which may not be what you want but now you can put anything in here that you want. Now, if you like having the location of hours and the customer testimonials, then one thing you might do is, like we talked about before, change this name to something else, bring in a different set of posts, and don't put anything in, in those posts. Um, that should blank it. Gosh, I wish I had one I could try it on. Okay, I, I did tell you at the beginning of this video that I was going to show you three possibilities. Now, one is, uh, the first two that we just I just showed you, they're really about manipulating the theme. They're, go, they're about going in and making severe changes to the way the theme already behaves. And there's another option. Elegant Themes offers something called an Elegant Builder. Uh, you'll find it, in, if you log in, in the plugin downloads, it's called Elegant Builder. And basically what it is, is drag and drop page construction. So you add a module, you add a column, you bring, con you bring content in. There are image sliders. Um, there's 
you know, blurbs, columns, there's all kinds of really neat things that you can do inside here. And then if you build your page using the Elegant Builder, you would simply inside your theme, tell it to use that page as your home page. Uh, so we would go to reading, for example, and on front page displays, instead of your latest post, which is what it should be now, you would click a static page and then you would choose the page that you did the builder on. And I even I set this up so that I could go in and show you really quickly um, how the page builder works. So I've gone in and I've installed it on my blog, although I don't use it. I've installed it for the purposes of this vi uh, video. There's Elegant Builder and all I've done is activate it. So I'm going to go create a new page and I'll show you how this works. Now again, this is not intended to be a tutorial. I'm gonna, this is going to be really, really fast. So underneath the post content, we, we would give this a name. And because we're going to hide it, you can give it any name you want. Just, just make sure it's meaningful to you. Don't put anything in the content area because that's not where the theme is going to get its content from. It's actually going to get its content from the layout builder. So you start with a blank canvas. You would click on add a module and you would say something like, okay, I want um, a widget area or I want a simple slider. Like if this were a home page, I'd put a simple slider in here. This little symbol means you can edit it. So just click this and open it up and here are the things that you can do. You can add a slide and you can change the CSS class. So for example, if I were to click add a slide, my slide could be anything. It could be content, it could be text, it could be any kind of HTML. You've got a lot of flexibility here. To remove one you don't want, simply click on the X and say yes, I want to delete it. Now if we wanted to add a column, so for example, I might start with a resizable column and inside that column add a module, maybe a text block and make it smaller inside the text block or beside the text block add some tabs or a video you can pull this in to whatever you want you can resize it to whatever you want so I could go add a second resizable column pull that down make it small oops you have to drag from the right make it small enough to fit next to it open it up and drag something else into this so you can drag a list you can drag a pricing table and all I'm doing is I'm telling the theme, this is what I, this is the content I want to put in here. Now all I've done is pull them in. I haven't added anything. Each one of these has an edit symbol where you can go edit what you want to in see inside, for example, the text box. So you just click this to open it, add your text here, save the changes, save the page or publish the page in this case. And then do like we talked about before. Go to settings, reading, and tell your blog to look at your home page. And in this way, you can create a blog that contains everything you want it to contain and nothing you don't want it to contain. Now, if you do it this way, Robbie, you're going to have to take a little responsibility for things like the background and the CSS. And that may be more than you want to do. I know that I covered everything really fast and I know that I wasn't exactly using the same tools you were using, but I hope what I was trying to explain to you is a little clearer now. Thanks for tuning in.